There are multiple different ways to be able to grow your business online with copywriting. There's so many overwhelming different formulas, tactics, and all these things that you can write. My name is Benson Sun. Today, I want to give you the six core story formulas that you can use to quadruple your business or any business for that matter. fellow human beings, one of the core ways that we communicate is through emotions. We are able to use emotions first, we see that and then we justify with logic. It's why stories are so popular in movies and entertainment these days. When you watch a movie, the first thing that they start with is not about the fancy fights or all these different things, they start with the background of the character. There's a character and there's a struggle and then there's a story behind why that person's struggling why the character is struggling and how they overcome it. And then they become a success or a hero or whatnot. If you look at the story and the trends of every single movie or entertainment that you watch, or even a TV show, there's always the story that is selling the viewer, the selling you on watching and keeping them very engaged. Now there's formulas for you to be able to do this as well, to demonstrate that emotion, to build that relationship, build that connection with your target audience. And that's what we want to do with storytelling. People only buy, because of people that they know, they like, and they trust. These are the three core things of why people buy from people. And what's great about storytelling is that when you're a company, you're able to, it's hard for you, for people to connect with the company. It's easier for people to be able to anchor themselves, anchor your business and anchor your company as an individual using storytelling and emotions. The first formula for storytelling using copywriting is your brand slash company storytelling. How was your company founded? What was the history of your company? Why is it important? What are the emotions that your company elicit? What is the values that your company represents? You want to make sure that you tell the story about your business, how it started, why it's important. I think some of the companies that do this extremely well is two different types of companies. One of the ones I'm going to give you an example is uh, Burberry. Burberry actually is, is able to, it's a luxury bag brand, it's a worldwide recognized brand. You're able to actually see, there's a video that they created that you can see right here, and there's also their website. They give a background history on how they started, how they were founded, what was the struggles, the challenges that they went through, and how were they able to achieve the results? How were they able to become an international brand and become the luxury brand that they are today and be so successful? So being able to tell your story behind the scenes of how things happen, how you got started, how you got founded, what you went through, and how you became who you are today, the values that you represent, is such a powerful emotional connection that you're able to bridge with your brand storytelling. The other company that you're able to do this with that you wanna check out is looking at Honest Company. Honest Company, the one with Jessica Alba, if you go on their page, you can see that they focus a lot on talking about their origin, origin story. And they focus on using Jessica's story. So Jessica being becoming a mother, she was having kids, and then she used that to bridge the emotional connection with other parents, other families, other mothers. So you can see Honest as a company is using an influencer, a person to tell their brand and company storytelling. So that's what you wanna do for your business. You wanna make sure that on, let's say you're about your company page or your bio page, you don't make it about the logical stuff, like all these different things. You really wanna tell the origin story, how you got started, what were the failures, the challenges, the struggles that you went through. When you do this, you're able to build that connection with the person uh, that you're going for, your target audience. They only wanna know more about who you are, what your business represents, why is it important for them. They really wanna know you stand for the right values and that's important for you. The second way to be able to effectively tell a story is using the social impact storytelling method. Now, the social impact storytelling is used by companies that's actually doing a lot of good in the world. And they're also using it as a way for us to invest more money and spend our money there because it makes us feel good about ourselves. You see this with companies where, for example, there's a company that says every dollar that you spend with them, they donate 10 cents or 20 cents or whatever cent to a community, to a, to a third world country, to a charity, or to whatever cause that they're supporting. So that's one of the great ways of actually being able to tell a story about a business is that every time when you spend money, people wanna feel good about themselves. This is why it's so powerful. So for example, if there's a company A, every time you spend $20 to buy their bag, for example, they're gonna take it and then that's it. Versus if let's say there's a company B that says, hey, thank you for giving us $20. Every time you give us $20, we're gonna give back $2 or $3 to help people that are in need in a third world country. 
Now, if you as a rational person right here, if you see both companies and they were selling the exact same product, they had the same brand and the same marketing, but the only difference was that company was giving back to society, where would you most likely invest or spend your money? You would definitely be spending it in the person that's giving back to the community, to the society. So that's why you, that's why it's such a powerful thing. Now, obviously they're doing a lot of great, but at the same time, they know that they're using the storytelling method once they amplify and put it on the world to their target audience, that their target audience will resonate with this. And so they're using it as a way to also attract more uh, sales, more revenue, more customers as a storytelling method, because it's actually a very powerful way. People always wanna, keep in mind, people always wanna feel good about themselves they want to be a good Samaritan and they want to know that they're doing the right thing. Third way to be able to tell a story effectively is the client storytelling method. Now client storytelling is, for example, anytime you have a customer or a client that has a raving review about your product or a raving review about your service, you're able to document this via video and you're able to show it. You want to ask some questions like, how was your experience? Why did you go with us? Why, what, what, kind of, what changed in your life for you to come and use our product or service? What results were you going for? Or were you happy with it? What would you tell someone that is thinking about buying your product or service? You want to focus on where your customer or client was before they used your product or service and then where they are now when they're using your product or service. And it's obviously in a better place, right? Or they solved the problem that they had or they struggled with. This is a very powerful way to be able to give trust and build that relationship and build the credibility of your business is by using people in your target audience that you're going for and have them, instead of you saying how great you are, you use them, your target audience, to tell the same people that you're going for how great they are. It's word of mouth, it builds referrals and it also builds your word of mouth marketing, which is really one of the most powerful ways to build a marketing is word of mouth. And that's how you do it with client storytelling. You make these into videos, you share these with people, you use them in your marketing campaigns, you'll attract more of the same target audience that you're going for, and you wanna interview your 10 best customers and clients and be able to capture these things and tell their story. Not your business, tell their story. Fourth effective way to tell a story is using options storytelling. The options storytelling is, for example, let's say you have multiple different products or services, you have competitors, right? So you could say like, for example, John, you're visiting this website, you're about to buy this product or service. I'll tell you exactly what happens when you go with, let's say, a competitor, or you go with a complimentary product, or you go with our product. When you go down these different pathways, when you buy their product or you buy their service, here's what you can expect. You want to almost lay out the story, you want to lay out the roadmap of what happens if they choose your product or service versus if they choose your competitor or versus if they choose a complimentary product. So for example, let's say someone wants to buy shoes, right? Or they wanna buy a fitness product. So let's say there's a fitness type of equipment. If they use your new revolutionary type of equipment versus a competitor, you can say that they can save themselves time, they can save themselves money, they'll get better results. But if they go with the competitor, they'll get, they might get results, but it might not get as best results as they, if they were using your product. What does the journey look like from start to finish? Show this to your target audience and show them the process. One of the great ways and examples that I want to show this with you is one of the biggest companies in the world, Apple. If you go on Apple's website, you can actually see their manufacturing process and they lay it out on their website. You go on there, you can actually see they show their responsibility for their suppliers, how they move through the, the products, how they care about their, their employees and care about all these different people that are helping them make their product. So they're telling the story behind the scenes of how their product goes from A to Z. And this is a powerful way that you can use to for your product or service. The fifth storytelling method is choices storytelling. If you were to buy my product or service for your company, what does the step look like? What is that journey of a roadmap? If let's say they buy a competitor's product or a com complementary product, what does their journey look like? So for example, let's say you have a fitness product and you have this equipment that allows people to lose weight. Let's say it's a, it's a barbell machine. Then for example, you show that barbell machine and then you say, okay, when you use our barbell machine, you're able to save more time, you're able to lose weight, you're able to build muscle, you get better results. It's actually shown that when you use our equipment, you're able to get two to three times better results than the competitor. And you say, okay, if we go to competitor, it might be cheaper, but why would you sacrifice a cheaper product to get less results? You want better results, not a better equipment. Sixth and final way to be able to tell a story, a very compelling one, and the most powerful one that you can use is called emotional identity storytelling. Now emotional identity storytelling is being able to tell a story and elicit emotions from your audience. And being able to convey that you have values 
and you have uh, goals that are in alignment with who they are as a person. That's super powerful. Now, real world examples I wanna give you instead of trying to explain it, and you can see it in action in the real world. Look at Dove. Dove is one of the most recognized brands for soaps. But if you think of soap, soap is a commodity, right? You can buy soaps for a dollar, you can buy soaps for a few cents, you can get expensive soap. Soap is a commodity, you can buy it anywhere, you can buy organic soaps and all these different things. But what Dove has done masterfully and beautifully is that they're able to tie their soap with an emotion. If you go on their site, they actually do not talk anything about soaps. They focus on what? They focus on women. They focus on the word beauty. They've been able to tie emotional word beauty with soap. Now that's a very powerful connection. So whenever people hear about Dove, they don't hear about soap. They've been able to convey their brand, their emotions, their values so well that when a woman hears Dove and you look at their advertisements, they convey beauty, women, being authentic, being yourself, being who you really are, right? You gotta have confidence. They, emos they elicit all these different emotions, convey them through their branding, through their messaging, through everything that they're doing in their business and their marketing and also their advertising. The next one that I wanna give you a real life example is a most popular energy drink in the world, Red Bull. Red Bull has been able to convey their brand as energy, extreme sports, taking their life to the next level. If you want to experience something different from your everyday life, you need Red Bull. They, that's why they convey with everything. If you go on their site, they do not talk anything about their energy drinks. The only thing they focus on is extreme sports, taking it to the next level, soar into new heights, all these different things. So when someone hears Red Bull, they're not even thinking about the energy drink as much when they hear about Red Bull, internally what they're feeling is they're feeling, ah, this is how I'm gonna change today. Red Bull, I'm gonna take myself to the next level with Red Bull. Being able to feel these things is extremely powerful when someone hears about your brand. So demonstrating emotion is extremely important. Now the third one and final one is one of the most recognized fitness brands in the world, Nike. When you hear about Nike, you hear, you think fitness apparel and all these different things, but what they've been able to convey is what? Success right? Being able to push yourself to the next level. Don't be the same way. Keep taking it to the next level. Keep pushing yourself and you can be successful. Just do it. Just take action. So when someone wears Nike, they automatically feel like I'm successful. I'm taking action. Just do it. I'm going to do this. This is a new me just by wearing their product, even though what they're selling is truly a commodity. You can buy shorts, you can buy shoes, you can buy clothing anywhere, right? but they've done it so well with emotional identity storytelling that they're able to convey so much emotion when they hear about their products or services. And you think about it, all these three things are basically commodities, but when you tie with an emotion and you're able to convey it so well, then your consumer can't differentiate. They feel that emotion, they buy emotion. Remember, people always buy from people they know, like, and trust. And even though they're companies, they've been able to establish themselves as emotional hubs for these people. So you wanna make sure you wanna figure out what is the emotions, what are the top three emotions you wanna focus on conveying to your target audience? What are those things that you wanna demonstrate? What do you want them to feel when they use your product or service? What are those things? What are the three things? When you demonstrate those things, it conveys it through your brand, your storytelling and everything. It will change your business forever and the way that you build it and how you market out to the world. So that's the sixth and final one. Now that you know the six core storytelling methods to take your business to the next level, and it really will set the bar really high and take you to new heights, you can be able to grow your business using storytelling and differentiate yourself from the competition. What your consumers will be able to see when they feel like emotion with your business is next level. So three things I want you to do, I want you to comment below. What is the one storytelling method that you're gonna be focusing on first in your business? And then I want you to hit the like on this button. Let me know that you like this video. You like this, you got value from this video and content. And then at the same time, the third one is I want you to subscribe. There's gonna be me right here, you can see. I want you to hit that subscribe button and join the community. I don't make any money making these videos. It's really for me to give back to you and give back to the community. I wanna add value to you. I wanna make it easier for you to grow your business online. So join the community, be a part of this. Let's communicate and connect. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.